Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kind right. of a trick question. Hit it. Here we go. Okay, this is my desktop. Uh, how hard can it be? It's been there for 25 years, uh, since the year after I opened the business. The, um, the quote comes from uh, late nights of drinking with the two Maziero brothers and my buddy Jim Lucy. Unless you think it's an inspirational, aspirational note that I run my business on, the end of it is, how hard can it be? People dumber than us do it. Um, uh, billboard, uh, rejected by the client, uh, overruled by uh, Elizabeth Taylor. She thought it was hilarious, and we got to run it. Billboard, rejected by the billboard company because they said, we don't want people out in the countryside honking. And we said, yes, that's exactly the point. I love billboards. And sometimes you don't get to put the billboard where you'd like it to be. So sometimes you have to go find a place for it. This is the city of Atlanta. The billboard that I wanted, as you can see in the top there, we saw that it was in a parking lot. We rented eight parking spaces. We rented a 40-foot tractor trailer, parked it next to the sidewalk, spread the uh, spread it, and worked. Uh, tripod. Tripod delivers. Uh, cease and desist order from FedEx within three hours of delivery of this to um, uh, media buyers throughout New York City. Cease and desist order. I work with a lot of uh, athletes. I thought it was important to mention it. I met Kobe when he was 19. I met Shaq when he was 20. Let me tell you that fame and fortune has an ugly side to it. The last time I saw Kobe Bryant, he was talking in the third person and berating me, and Nate Wynn Stanley was not amused. <laughs> I thought you might be interested to see what the WNBA game ball looked like, uh, what it might have looked like. There were two directions here. David Stern, uh, head of the NBA, said, if you're clicking around on a TV set, you, might, you have to know that it's the WNBA by the ball they're using. And Rebecca Lobo, who was one of the league's first players, told me if it was pink or frilly, she would make me eat it. <laughs> this is what the XFL looked like. XFL was a great client to have. We had a ball. We actually did the first XFL television commercial which was broadcast four months before the XFL debuted. The only thing that they told us when we did the commercial was that you're not allowed to show anybody playing football because we actually don't know what it's going to look like. <laughs> so we got Dick Butkus to be the coach, and he sits and screams at you for 30 seconds of un uninterrupted joy and bliss. The other thing that we did with the XFL, they were a great client. We convinced them to get a blimp. The blimp was supposed to uh, fly over NFL games uh, during the playoffs. This one made it to Oakland, California. On landing the night before the game, it blew away, landed on top of a seafood restaurant. A guy from the San Francisco Chronicle called me and asked me if we did it on purpose, and I said, what do you think? Okay, if you're a marketing firm and you have to be able to sell anything, you should also be able to sell nothing. I love this piece. I had nothing to do with it. It's Annette and Megan, and it's, a, it's just a wonderful piece of work. It's nothing. Uh, this was a uh, social media project that we did. We sent those boxes out. We got people to put their, post their pet peeves. All hell broke loose one morning when somebody posted, my pet peeve is when the boss hires an intern and doesn't give anybody a raise for a year. Guess whose son was working at the agency? <laughs> Two weeks later, my son admitted he wrote it. A cougar license in Las Vegas, it was easy. Remember when the economy went bad? We couldn't decide what to do with all those CFO tears. So we bottled it and made an economic stimulus spray because we were tired of cleaning out the closets. Uh, we actually got a call from a, a store just outside the Capitol, and they wanted to purchase these from us. They didn't realize that we all made them by hand. Hey, we love Christmas. Uh, over there is our elf trap. The elf trap was actually going to be two parts. 
uh, you're going to have an elf. You were also going to be a recipe for elf stew. But once we saw uh, what it was like to dismember and he began to talk about skinning the elf, we kind of deleted that part of it. <laughs> this is for the bus, and we were talking about driving the porcelain bus. We never showed this to the client, but man, did we laugh about it. That's driving the porcelain bus for those of you who have not been in college in some time. <laughs> this is the Big E. They hired us because they wanted to do something different. They thought this was really different, and they kind of used it, but they never called us back the next year. This is another, this is a pro bono client for the Albany Ad Club, the Passion of St. Sebastian, we thought was a great way to kind of talk about our business. Uh, on the left there, the photograph, they rejected it because it was a sacrilegious. This is an ad club. Needless to say, we no longer belong and we no longer do pro bono work for them. Uh, do we have to say anything about this? Colt got phone calls, Callahan got phone calls, the people whose buildings these signs were on got phone calls, we got phone calls, it worked. <laughs> I believe language is a powerful tool and I looked for something that I thought was, could withstand uh, the, the course of time. This is probably 20 years old, was done by my business partner and I uh, back then for Shakespeare, and what I like about it is it's still fresh today, and I still really think shows the power of the word. Thank you. Yeah.